<laughs> hey, welcome to Inside the Album. I'm oh. Don Seckler. That's Tommy Hilkin in his hey. brand new studio over there looking oh. good. How you doing, Tom? <laughs> well, thank you for calling it a studio. Uh, <laughs> it's I'm doing good, Don. Real good. Good. And today... Yep. Today we are here uh, for Inside the Album. We are going to talk about Back in Black. Oh, yeah. uh, but before we get started, please subscribe, like us, share us with your friends, your family, even your grandma. We're family friendly here at Inside the Album. Or family, like you family. just said. Yeah, whatever oh, you got. Yeah. <laughs> So I'd uh, like you to also check out our website. It's www.insidethealbum.com. You can see all the episodes are there, all the audio versions. The video is on YouTube. You can also check us out everywhere you get podcasts, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, all those different platforms. Check us out, like us, click the buttons, do the things, and that'll make us very happy. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Both tell them. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope everybody's enjoying the show and you know we're we're up to episode mm. no, I think this is number 13 episode wow. 13 here for Back in Black by ACDC. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we dig in, we're going to talk about our charity that we're working with and we're looking for used instruments. So Tom, tell us a little bit about Music for Mark. Well, thanks Don. Music for Mark is why we're doing this podcast to raise the uh, awareness to everyone that we have a website called Music for Mark where we're bringing musical lessons and musical instruments to the world for kids who can use them, need them. Anybody who could use a musical instrument, Don, you and I both know music is our life. We love everything about it. Sure. Let's keep it going. We're going to help out schools, bring instruments in, bring musical lessons in. And Don, I've got some great news. Last week, we shared that we were looking for some used musical instruments and I'm proud to announce we got our first used instrument delivered to me yesterday. Awesome. You know what it is? I do. <laughs> Why don't you tell us? <laughs> we got a trombone. Nice. How great is that? That's awesome. Of all the things you'd figure you'd get a guitar or a ukulele or a Listen. harmonica. Somebody gave me a trombone yesterday That's and great. I'm a happy man. It That's is great. really good. Yes. You know, and any instrument. So we're not just talking about rock instruments here. You yeah. know, although, you know, there is a, a heavy trombone influence in ska music. So that yeah. kind of is a rock and roll instrument. Oh, listen, but it is. we'll Chicago. take, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. take whatever you've got. If it's horns, strings, keys, or percussion, don't hesitate, reach out. And we'd, we'd love to uh, take those uh, unused instruments off your hands. Even a washboard. I'd love to get my hands on <laughs> a washboard, right? <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you. Musicformark.com. Yeah. Check it out. And all the information's on there, how to contact us. So check out musicformark.com. So we're starting off with our first ACDC album here. This one is mm -hmm. uh, Back in Black, which I think most people consider their masterwork and masterpiece. The band has five members. It's Brian Johnson, who's the lead singer on this album. Mm -hmm. Angus Young, lead guitar. Malcolm Young, rhythm guitar. Cliff Williams is on bass and Phil Rudd is on drums. So the, the band has a brother combo, just like Van Halen in it. And that drives a lot of ACDC's music. Angus gets all the press, but Malcolm Young is an amazing, amazing rhythm guitar player. This is a band that is driven on riffs and rhythm. You know, the thing I like best about ACDC is that this band never changes. They don't adapt. They aren't doing disco versions or disco songs in, in 1980. They Amen. are, ACDC is the same no matter what album you put on. The music sounds very similar. And, you know, some people say, okay, you know, I don't like it. I That's too much for me. I'd love to see them do something different. I love that they're the same all the time. It's steady, it's reliable, and it's riffs. Yeah, power chords. Yeah. Yeah. Straight <laughs> no ahead. More. 
Right. And, you know, it's not super complicated. Uh, none of their songs are, are, are spectacularly like uh, progressive or anything like that. It's not going to be like Pink Floyd stuff that we talked about last week with all this orchestration and various levels of, of you know, craziness going on in the background. This is rock and roll. It's guitars, drums, amps, and a lot of screaming. <laughs> there you go. What more could you ask for? <laughs> yeah. So this is actually their seventh album. They, you know, have, had had a string of pretty popular albums, nothing major, you know, they, they Hell's Bells, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Highway to Hell uh, did really well. But before this, they, you know, they've been playing and touring and they're on the road rock band. And this is really them at their peak. Uh, it was recorded in seven weeks from mm. April to May of 1980. And the album was released in on July 25th, 1980. So at the time, you had a lot of interesting stuff on the charts. We had The Wall by Pink Floyd, which uh, was a dominant album, very, very popular at the time. Yeah. Uh, on the pop rock side, you had Glass Houses by Billy Joel, uh, his second like major hit album yeah. in a row. Great album. After uh, 52nd Street, you yeah. had uh, The Long Run by The Eagles, which was a huge, huge <laughs> hit album, right? I'm not sure the copy sold on that album, but that album had a ton of hit songs on it. Oh, yeah. Huge. Uh, yeah. You also had, this is also interesting, you had High Infidelity by REO Speedwagon, which was their you know, one of their mega hits, just a, a hugely popular song on the radio constantly. Yep. And then you had a lot of uh, rock bands dipping into disco. So you've got Kiss with Dynasty doing I Was Made for Loving You. You've got Emotional Rescue by The Stones, <laughs> which is their kind of their disco song, I guess. <laughs> I just want you to know we'll never be covering that Kiss album. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I I did tell everybody here. I listened to Dynasty <laughs> last night by yeah. accident. I it put Ooh. it on. I just started listening to it, and oh. I texted Tom. I said, "This is one turd of an album." <laughs> turd, turd, <laughs> horrible. That, it you know. is really, really Ooh. bad. They're actually. I kind of. I, I, I hate to divert from ACDC here for a second, but with it's Kiss. Okay. So on this album, on the Kiss album, Dynasty, Ace covers 2000 Man by the Rolling Stones. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, and to me, that's the best song on that album, uh, yeah. Dynasty. I'm really not a fan of, of disco Kiss at all. And, uh, you know, that that's it was an interesting turn for them. But it just shows you what was going on in the, uh, you know, the genre out there. Here's the album cover. We'll show this on the video. <laughs> It's straight ahead. If you haven't, I'm sh sure it's iconic. I don't know who uh, people haven't seen this, but it's yeah. just a black album with the logo and the word and the words back in black. And, you know, it's the whole the whole album is a tribute to the previous lead singer, Bon Scott, who had died right before this album. So mm. a lot of the elements of this album are dedicated to Bon Scott. They were this, these, you know, these guys were fast friends. Yep. And this guy, you know, binge drank himself to death one night yeah. and, uh, you know, another wow. loss to to uh, to drugs and, and abuse of alcohol. Crazy. So the album, you know, like I said, the album cover is pretty straightforward, but it's pretty iconic and, and really kind of sets the mood for the record. Right. This album is the best selling hard rock album of all time. It sold 50 million copies. Went to number one in only three countries. I know, right? 50 million. That's insane. 50 million, man. And, and they made it in seven weeks. Yeah. Seven right. Seven right. After, the, after the main, after the lead singer and the lyricist wow. died. So they bring in a whole new guy, Brian Johnson. Yeah. You know, not off the street. He was in another band at the time. But they bring in Brian Johnson, who kind of sounds like bon scott oh, a little bit you know and, and oh, yeah. similar similar yeah, for similar, sure. similar voice but also could write the lyrics you know you you wouldn't know the difference between the lyrics from uh you know dirty deeds up to this album they're very similar they, they're in that same vein it's a you know bad boy kind of stuff it's rock and roll it's you know it's a little misogynistic so these days some of the lyrics would be looked at with a different eye but in did, general did it's say broads on it no, yeah, no broads. <laughs> nice. So the, the interesting thing, I mean, this is right at their peak. So they had Highway to Hell, 
back in black and then mm -hmm. for those about to rock uh we salute you which was another huge hit for them later on in the 80s so they uh they were scheduling rehearsals for it in london and then all of a sudden there came an opening at compass point studios in nassau the bahamas so mm. they decided to go ahead and shoot down to the bahamas the problem was that they were having trouble finding real studio space in london so they said all right let's go to right. the bahamas we'll record it there evidently there was a you know with the bahamas they could save some money on on some taxes or something so there was that added benefit so they would go ahead and fly down to uh you know from australia over to the bahamas to record this album good place to go yeah so uh brian johnson said it was uh really kind of uh, barely a studio he said they were in these little concrete cells they were they had chairs and stuff but not really fancy there's this big old black lady who who ran the whole place and she was like totally <laughs> fearsome she ruled the place like with an iron fist like it and he said that she told her that they she, they had to lock the doors at night because they she warned them about these Haitians who'd come down at night and rob the place. So she brought all the guys in ACDC, all these six foot tall fishing spears to keep by the door. Oh my God. <laughs> so these guys are trying to record an album and they're like, you know, having to defend great. themselves against the mayhem outside. That's great. Just in case, here's a spear. That's yeah. great. <laughs> So Brian Johnson said, you know, it was a bit of a, a much bit different environment than he was used to seeing in, in uh, like Newcastle, Australia. Wow. Yeah. You, the other thing about Brian Johnson, like I just said, he was brand new just into the band. So he felt this huge pressure never having recorded with the group. That was kind of on his shoulders as well. So that that's even more amazing that it was such a good performance and, and the lyrics were so well done because he's, there's so much of this pressure. Yeah, what a home run for the band, right? Really is. Yeah, for and sure. Brian Johnson, what a home run. Yeah, That's yeah, and you know now now Brian Johnson is ACDC, you know, along with Angus. So, well, most people, yeah, yeah. So um, the interesting thing though is that they decided they made a conscious decision not to use any of Bon Scott's leftover lyrics. The reason they did that was they felt like it would be trying to profit from his death. So uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. What you want to do is profit off of somebody's death. Yeah, yeah, that's no good. Unless um, you kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> so they also worked with uh, Mutt Lang was the producer on this. And, you know, people may know Mutt Lang because he went on to produce a lot of uh, hard rock, hair metal types of stuff in the 80s, Def Leppard, things like that. He was he was pretty you know pretty tough on Brian in the studio. He'd he'd have uh, Brian you know redo things over and over, and he's saying to Brian, "Hold on, you sang that note too long, so there's no room for a breath." So like he was like really oh, kind wow. of micro managing mm -hmm. Brian's performance. Yeah, which in the end we we look back at this and go, "Wow, this record is is pretty close to perfect." So it, it worked out, but it was again, it was really really frustrating for for Brian Johnson to be uh, diving in this way. But it's interesting when you're saying that about. I had no idea until I heard John Lennon talking about breathing, how important it is to singing, right? Yeah. The timing of breathing, right? You don't think of that. No one ever thinks of that, right? But it's well, the most important thing you can do. Yeah, and especially this stuff is high energy. There's a lot of screaming in here. I mean, it's not like the screaming that they do these days, like in, in the in the new <laughs> metal and stuff like that. But Oh, these kids. <laughs> but he, you know, he's he's getting up there with his voice a lot. Oh. So let's dive in. We're going to start off with first track, the opener, which is Hell's nice. Bells. A fine choice. And simple, right? It's not complicated.
drums are just amazing on this. I love this. So again, I think this is one of those songs where, you know, everybody knows this song. This is the, you know, it's it's hard to avoid this if you've listened to rock at all. <laughs> yes, you've heard it. You've heard it. Yeah. Numerous times. Yes. Numerous times. And we'll, yeah. we'll get into that. You know, yeah. and part of this album, it, while it is so great, is uh, a lot of people are kind of like over it a little bit because it, it was played like a ton in, in the 80s. Oh, yeah. But the bell, uh, of course, is in tribute to Bon Scott. So it starts off with the bell tolling four times. Then you hear that guitar riff come in. And then the bell plays another, uh, rings another nine times, gradually fading out. And so when they would do this song live, Brian Johnson would strike the bell. So kind of like doing the toll for Bon. It, it's kind right. of, you know, kind of a cool thought that they were keeping his memory alive through this. Oh, yeah. So yes. the thing that they said is, you know, we can't honor Bon Scott's memory with a sound effects bell. So they tried to get a big real bell. And so their <laughs> first attempt to record the bell took place at a, uh, a museum in England. And they couldn't, you know, couldn't get it to work right. So they said, all right, screw this. We're going to go ahead and have a bell made. So they commissioned wow. a one ton bronze bell from a local <laughs> foundry, <laughs> local foundry. What? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so who knew? Right. And then they ended up, you know, that they when they commissioned that bell, they would eventually use that bell on stage. Sure. The roadies love that. Yeah. <laughs> but. But listen to this, the bell wasn't ready in time for the recording. So they, the people who were making the bell arranged for ACDC to record using a similar bell in a nearby church, but they couldn't, uh. they couldn't get that, the sound right on it. There were birds living in the bell. They'd hit the bell, the birds would fly out and that would get on the tape and then they would all go back in the bell after. <laughs> wow. So it was like, they're <laughs> having a lot of, lot of bell frustration. <laughs> wow. Well. You know, you know, you think about it. It was a church, and the song was Hell's Bells. Yeah, that might have something to do with it, right? It might have, yeah. yeah. Somebody was putting a little stop to that. <laughs> so they ended up, here's the end story, is they ended up deciding to use the bell that was in production. So they borrowed a mobile recording unit by uh, who, that was owned by Ronnie Lane, ah. and they wheeled it into the foundry. And the bell was, like, hung in a block and tackle and struck by the guy who built it. Wow. Uh, the interesting thing about this was that bells are not easy to record. So what they did was place 15 microphones with various dynamics around different locations around the foundry to try and record the sound. And once they got it on tape with all these different mics, they went back to the studio and figured out, you know, a combination. They figured out some kind of combination and put a, a bunch of the mics together and then they slowed it down to half speed so that it would sound a lot more ominous. Wow. Sounds like the bell took three of the seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it did, right? That's crazy. <laughs> the other thing about this is when they were in Bahamas, they were getting a lot of bad weather. And that's where that the first line, I'm rolling thunder, pouring rain, coming on like a hurricane, lightning's flashing across the sky, you're only young, but you're going to die. So that, that all comes from that actual weather that they were experiencing at the time. Awesome. But the thing is, you know, when you listen to this, it's the first song on the album, and it's the first song uh, without, without Bon Scott. 
It's kind of like the passing of the torch because they had to get this song. Since it's the first song on the record, it had to be perfect, had to show that Brian Johnson could do the job. And, you know, I think it does that in, in spades. Oh, yeah. Like I said, very lucky. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to number two, song number two. This one is Shoot to Thrill. So to me, Shoot to Thrill, I mean, this song is made, it's an arena rock song, right? Yep. Yeah. You know, it's it's just, it's upbeat, it's going. And it's a lot of like the kind of the character in Dirty Deeds. So it's kind of like <laughs> the ultimate bad boy, too many women, too many pills. Um, you know, so there's that swagger, that kind of Aussie swagger that these guys have always had. Um, and they, they actually did release this song as a single. So again, it was one of those songs that you heard quite frequently on the radio, radio in the uh, early 80s. It's interesting when you listen to it, you could hear the 80s in it. You know, it actually took me to a, a Sammy Hagar song in my head, had a little bit of a Sammy Hagar in there. Right. Yeah. And Sammy Hagar, I mean, most of Sammy Hagar's music is that kind of arena rock, you know, it's just driving, boom, boom driving, boom, yeah, boom, just boom, driving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So, but good Very stuff. Cool. I like that one oh, a lot. Yeah. Real good. All right. So let's, uh, let's dive into the next one. Come what on. do you do for money, <laughs> honey? <laughs> I love this riff. So this song, you know, the thing about ACDC, these choruses are always sing along, oh, you sure. know, it, yeah. it's straightforward, simple, boom, boom, boom. And it, the crowd gets into it every single time. It's funny. You, you said it earlier, you know, and I, I didn't give it much thought to it, being like arena rock. You know, I think people started to actually create knowing they were going to be playing the arenas. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, the songs have to be catchy. They, they're got to be relatively simple. And they've got to build up to something, you know, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward kind of formula. Uh, but you know, it, it, I thought the bands that do it, I don't have any problem with them. I just, I, I enjoy it. I think these, these songs are yeah. great. Well, when you think about it, you can go and you can listen to music, you know, 
Clapton's and things like that. And then you've got your participation where it's like it's a party. It literally is, you know? Right, right. There's not a lot to delve into, like hearing all the layers and things like this. There are no layers. There's one layer and it's all in your face, you know? Yeah. And sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's the best. Well, instead of being in a club, you're in an arena. It's the yeah. same energy, you know? It's fun. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. So this one is actually, so these guys are have always been kind of, you know, they're Aussie, they're working class, you know? They showed up, you know, they were playing shows in, in jeans and t-shirts, no fans fancy costumes is the exact opposite of like an Elton John there the the stage performance was them you know I will well I shouldn't say that Angus had the costumes a little bit um but the rest of the band was just you know in jeans and t-shirts a little bit Angus had that that schoolboy thing he used to wear looked like Eddie Munster yeah I never understood that like what was the point of that but I see him I'll ask yeah so, but the the point of this, I, so the song, like these guys are kind of working class guys, blah, 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 not, you know, and this is like calling out some fancy woman who avoids work by hicking up with rich men. So, you know, nice. he, they're, uh, they're getting straight to the point there and not, uh, not being very uh, uh, subtle <laughs> yeah. and subtle is not a word you would use with ACDC at all. I never met one of those women. <laughs> All right, let's dive into track number four. This is Giving the Dog a Bone. Again, a good, you know, great riff, great drumming intro. you know, kind of nasty about oral sex, obviously, you know, not, not, like I said, not too subtle, <laughs> No, not at all. but still, you know, and uh, you still find yourself singing along, even though the, you know, the words are, are pretty raunchy. I just like the fact that they rhymed down on her knees with 90 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a little bit of work. You know, I'd like to be in that meeting where they figured out what that was going to be. Which angle did they mean? You know. <laughs> so definitely, definitely not a definitely not a family song by any stretch. Hey, hey, my family loves this song. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna move into another kind of. Uh, dirty song for a lack of a better term. Uh, this is <laughs> Look at this you. When did you become a priest? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna excuse me, folks. You excuse might want to lower your volume. <laughs> take you might want to take the children out of the room Please. right now. <laughs> we have a dirty song coming up. <laughs> Welcome to 1965, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm Ward Cleaver. <laughs> Ward. All right, so let's listen to Let Me Put My Love Into You. Ooh. Again, subtle, right? Right. And again, listen to this riff. It's, a, it's fucking amazing.
me cut your cake with my knife. Yeah, wow. <laughs> there you go. Strawberry filling. Genius. <laughs> so again, super dirty song. Um, so in 1985, I don't know if people remember, but there, there was super uh, dirty. <laughs> super dirty. It's uh, actually, you know, it's funny because it's not as dirty as some of the songs that you hear today, which are a lot more direct and graphic. You know, especially dude, Andrew like Dice Clay was out in the eighties. Come on, man. But anyway, back in 85, there was this organization of uh, called Parents Music Resource Center, and they were trying to put rating al ratings on albums yep. with stickers, and they actually f actually ended up putting them on, which just made kids want those records even more. So it was so I ridiculous. Remember. Tipper Gore. Yeah, Tipper Gore yeah. was on that. And oh, so yeah. Uh, you, while you know any number of ACDC songs could have hit their <laughs> hit their criteria, they chose this song. Let my let me put my love into you as one of their uh, for their list of the filthy fifteen songs that they found the most reprehensible. Wow, <laughs> wow! I guess they didn't listen to any Zappa. <laughs> <laughs> So it was like, you know, all the ACDC fans, they don't That's give great. a shit. They're watching this. You know, you could see this stuff happening. It was on TV because they were before Congress and stuff. Yeah. And they were just happy about, you know, they were happy. They were laughing that it was it was bothering these, uh, you know, these people so much. So, you know, they weren't backing off of it. It was it was just going to continue to be raunchy and 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 rough <laughs> and dirty and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> So let's move into the title track. This is number six. This is an all time legendary, amazing, great song. This is Back in Black. Yes, it is. Back in Black, obviously, uh, you know, this is more of the tribute to Bon Scott. And uh, you can hear that in the lyrics that say, forget the hearse because I never die. And that kind of means that he'll live on through forever through the music. The band actually got the idea for the title before writing any of the song. So Malcolm Young had come up with the riff, had been playing it for years. So that that opening riff. And, uh, you know, as guitar players do, they when they have those kind of riffs, and we heard this like from Eddie Van Halen and, and on the eruption um, piece, that they do, they get these riffs and they'll use them as like a warm up piece. So they'll sit down and just play it and they play it every day and they play it all the time. And so they brought in, use that riff, and then they okay. said, okay, we're going to call this Back in Black. And then they, you know, gave it over to Brian and said, okay, write the lyrics around this phrase and, you know, this riff. Yeah. Joe Walsh talks about that a lot, that songs that he would just be playing these riffs and people would walk in and go, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> and it becomes a song. Nothing better than that, man. Yeah, that happens frequently with guitar yeah. players, especially. Right. They're just playing around and next thing you know, it's the greatest riff, riff in rock and roll. Yeah. All right, so let's let's take a listen to the next track, which is probably ACDC's most famous song. This is You Shook Me All Night Long.
almost makes you want to sing along, doesn't it, Tom? That's what it's all about. <laughs> I, I get I get the point. It's certainly arena rock. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, great song. I think everybody knows it. You know, you, some of these things, like we said before, you hear them so much, you kind of get, get bored with them. Um, but Brian uh, came up with the line about the, she was a fast machine. She kept her motor clean. He realized, and he realized that cars and women are very much alike. He said that they go fast, let you down, but then they make you happy again when you see the new model. That's <laughs> <laughs> why we should put gas in them. <laughs> so, you know, That's nice. you just re- it's just kind of reinforces that ACDC is not known for their deep, sensitive lyrics. No. <laughs> You think about it, right? You, you're listening to the drumming. It's all just straightforward. You know, you got that, you know, we always talked about how great Charlie Watts was, right? Yeah. Nothing nothing outrageous, just kept the beat, kept the band going. Same thing here. It's great. I love the drumming throughout all this. Yeah, yeah. I think the drumming really helps the song a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, the other thing was Brian Johnson, when they were in the Bahamas, he kept seeing all these American girls and their thighs and that really inspired him to put that in there so this is all you know from their heads and a little little bit of experience just the thighs yeah just the thighs <laughs> thighs and a piece of cake well, you so, need. yeah so the song started off um malcolm and angus came to brian johnson and they they had the the song they, they said we call it shook me all night long if you listen to the chords, Brian said that the words just fell into place. So he can't, he doesn't even claim any writing credit on this because he feels like it was just that song was meant to be. And Angus and Malcolm brought it to him and basically he filled in the blanks. Yeah, that's it. Filled in the blanks, which is great. Yeah. Listen, classic so. song, classic album. This song has been played everywhere. And again, you know, when you make your breaks and you get on the radio, it's really what you're shooting for, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we- Never forget, you got to sell albums. Yes, sir. All right. So let's move over to track number eight. This one is Have a Drink on Me. So a lot of people would say it might be considered bad taste after your lead singer drinks himself to death to include a song about trying to encourage a guy to have another drink. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. It's just, you know what? I think the thing is with these guys, this is who they, they were heavy drinkers, you know, from the beginning. They, I don't think it was, this is just who they were, so... I don't think they give it much thought to it about like, yeah. oh my God, we shouldn't ever talk about drinking again. Right, right. Yeah, you know I mean, so like I said before, these guys never change. You know, they 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 are who they are. That's that's what it is. It's a great song. I love it. You know, yeah. but uh, could be thought of as a little weird after your lead singer just died from alcohol. <laughs> hey, let's sing about booze. We're gonna go over to uh, track number nine. This one is Shake a Leg. So 
this song, you know, especially live, and I, I've seen them live a few times. That song is amazing live because I really, while it picks up the pace there, when they yeah. do it live, it's at another level, you know, yeah. and the place goes bonkers. Just so much fun. It's got a little bop to it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's oh, got a little yeah. pop, a little bop. It's it, 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 this is another one of those one of their Aussie bad boy swagger songs, you know, uh, where it's just that's who they are, and uh, you know, really comes through, and and the result is great. And that's probably one of those songs that's lesser known on this album. Yeah, you know, it's not as popular as Back in Black, You Shook Me, and all these other ones, but uh, still a great, great track. It's that Aussie swagger. Aussie swagger, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> There's an outtake. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. All right, so let's let's take a listen to the album Closer. This is one of my all-time favorite songs. Uh, this is Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution. It's a little mellow, but you know, they're so blues based too and you can hear that here you hear that guy taking a drag he lights a cigarette and then takes a drag from it nice I yes, think, it will. Yes, it will. Rock and roll will survive. And, you know, that is kind of like what we were talking about at the beginning. It's kind of a pushback against all these 80s bands or, band, or rock bands in 1980 that started, like, kind of losing favor and doing disco and things like that. Zeppelin had just broken up. Uh, Sabbath you know was was also in shambles because ozzy was gone right and oh then, yeah yeah uh, the rolling stones and kiss were were doing ballads and disco and so you know this is them kind of standing up for rock and roll right. and uh i like the part at the beginning where it's not the distortion and it's just angus playing that uh i think it's angus playing that opening riff it just shows you how bluesy ACDC really is. You know, if you take away the overdrive and everything, you're going to hear a lot of like kind of, uh, you know, typical 12 bar blues songs uh, when you when you listen to ACDC. And, you know, well, most bands, listen, think about it. It's only so many chords you can play and it'll all take you back to the blues. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We always say that, right? It's good. Well, it's guitar chords. It's plain and simple. Keith Richards says it's the best. It's only so many chords. There's only so many notes. Right. That's what it's all about. But it's how you right. put them together. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? All right. So that's it for this legendary album, Back in Black. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We will be back next week when we are going to uh, go inside what? the album. Wait for it. Rocket to Russia by the Ramones. No way. Oh, yeah. Get out of town. <laughs> there you go. Gabba, gabba, hey. I thought you'd like that one. 
on. Come on. I got stories. <laughs> Excellent, Don. Good job, man. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.